Hello and welcome back to the series on JavaScript for testers. I'm Bushra. So in this series, so far we have been learning the core concepts of JavaScript. Now is the time to steer towards testing. In this video, we'll be learning JavaScript test framework and assertion library. So what is a test framework? Well, a test framework is something that lays out the plan how your test would be structured, how to handle test data, how to run your test, how the report would be generated and so on. Test frameworks can reduce maintenance costs and testing efforts and hence they are very critical to your testing project. An assertion library? Well, whenever you write a test case, you will always want to make assertions. Does the pop-up appear when I click on this button? Do I get this value? Does the value increment when I perform this action? And so on. So, assertion libraries provide you a mean to perform those checks. Here, this chart shows various JavaScript test frameworks and their popularities. Focus on the dark red area. I've used it before and would like to use it again. So, Jest is the most popular one here, but it is mostly for unit testing. Then we have Mocha, which is very, very popular. And then here we have Cypress. Cypress is very new and having such high popularity in such a short span of time is amazing. In fact, if you're interested in Cypress, I have a series on Cypress as well here on this YouTube channel. You can find the link in the description box below. And I usually provide useful links and updates in the description box. So you might want to keep an eye on it. So, for this video, we have picked Mocha as the test framework and Chai as the assertion library. Okay, so let's get started with Mocha and Chai. And yes, Cypress also uses Mocha. Cypress is built on top of it. So, if you're interested in Cypress, then Mocha is a good place to start. And guess what's the assertion library Cypress picked? Well, it's Chai. And that's because they're best of breed. Let's start with Mocha. So here we have our project opened. And in one of our previous videos, we installed Mocha and Chai. So I've got them here. But in case you don't have them installed, you can install them using this. Okay, so hopefully you too have both Mocha and Chai installed as regular or dev dependencies. Now we'll create a file and we'll call it test.js. Now it's important to name your file test.js, otherwise Mocha wouldn't be able to locate and run your test. And if you would like to create multiple files for testing, then what you can do is you can create a folder named test and then you could have multiple files with whatever name you desire. Okay, so now here in this file, we'll start writing test using Mocha test framework. So here in Mocha, we use describe function. And this function takes in two parameters. The first one is the name of the functionality that you are going to test. And the second parameter is a function. And this function holds the test. There could be one test or multiple tests inside this describe function. So describe function contains a collection of tests related to a single functionality. It can be thought of as a test suite. Now to write an individual test, we use it function, which is which actually stands for individual test. Now it function also takes two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the test and the second parameter is a function. This function contains the body of the test. You could also use arrow functions here like this, but it's better to stick to regular functions. Arrow functions in Mocha causes issues in certain cases, so it's best to avoid them here. Now our test says 
it should be of type string. So let's create a variable and store some text in it. Now in our test, we need to verify that the variable name holds a string. So this is where chai comes in. Now let's first understand what chai is. So chai is an assertion library that could be used with any JavaScript test framework. Chai provides three different assertion styles for you to choose from. Should, expect, and assert. Should and expect a BDD style. They're more expressive and readable. While assert is TDD style. It has a more classical feel. BDD style assertions are more popular. Now back to our project. Let's use try assertions. So in order to use should, expect or assert, we need to make them available here. For this, we need and then this. Now we'll be able to access them. So let's start with should. So we need to assert that name should be a string. So what should, this is how we write. Name should be a string. This is so English-like. Anyone reading this could easily tell what's happening here. Now, if you would like to use expect, this is how we use expect. Expect name to be a string. Now you understand why should and expect styles are so popular? They are chain style and therefore so readable. Whereas with assert, it would look like this. So I'm sure you find BDD styles better. Now let's have one more test to check that the variable contains John. And let's have assertions in all the three different styles. So we have name should equal John, expect name to equal John, assert equal name John. Okay. And um, if you would like to check for something that is not true, like name should not be something. So for that, we would simply put a not here. Say it should not be equal to Kate. So are you getting a hang of it? Chai assertions are really intuitive. You can explore more here. Now to run your test in terminal, we'll open a terminal and type npx mocha. And I hope now you understand why we are using npx. I recommend you watch the video on npx, but just to brief you, npx is node package runner. And without npx to run this test, we would have to do something like this. And so, of course, npx is so much better. We'll go with npx mocha. So npx lets you run local commands easily. And there we have our two tests passing. So it shows the test suite name here. That is what we have provided in the describe function. And then we have our two tests here. The green text mean they are passing. And it also specifies two passing and the time it took to run these two tests. Now let's explore some more features of Mocha. So far we have seen describe function is used to hold a collection of tests and each test is written within it function. Describe can have multiple it functions and describe can also have nested describe. 
So we can have a describe inside of a describe function. Now you can also skip a particular test or a collection of tests using dot skip. So say we would like to skip this test. So we use it dot skip. Save it. We'll run again. And now only one test ran and it passed and the other test it is pending. So wherever you put dot skip with an it function that test won't run. And anything that is skipped is marked as pending. We can also have dot skip with the describe block. And when we have that then all the tests within that describe won't run. Now, in case you would like to run only a particular test, then you could use dot only. So say we would like to run only this particular test and all the other tests in this file would like to skip them. Let's see what happens with this. So only should contain John. This test ran and nothing else in the file would run. And then again, you could have dot only with a describe block as well. And then all the tests within that describe would run and no test outside of it would run. And dot only and dot skip could be used multiple times. Say you have 10 individual tests, then you could have dot only attached to four of them. Okay, so moving on to hooks. Hooks are a really useful concept. So when running tests, there are usually some preconditions and cleanups required. And that is what hooks are used for. So Mocha has four hooks. Before, after, before each and after each. Let's add them to our describe block. So we have our four different hooks here. Now let's just run it and see what happens. So let me go ahead and remove this. We'll save the file and we'll run this now. So before each hook is executed before each of our test. Look, this is one test and before each is executed before this test. This is the another test and before each is executed before running this test. And similarly, after each hook is executed after each test. So we have after each here after this test and we have after each here after this test as well. Now, before hook and after hook are executed exactly once. Before starting any test and after all the tests have finished. So we have before hook here before any of the tests in the file ran and we have after hook here after all of the tests have executed. Okay, so do you like the way Mocha is reporting your test results here? Well, Mocha provides a whole bunch of reporters to choose from and the default reporter is a spec. That's what we are seeing here. You can find plenty of custom reporters for Mocha as well. One of the popular custom reporter is Mocha Awesome Reporter. You might want to have a look at it. It's really good. So I hope you got an understanding of JavaScript test framework, Mocha and the assertion library, Chai.